Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at some new proxy updates. All right, proxies are a great way to work with very large frame size video and edit as if it's smaller, but everything is retained. So just so we know, if you're working with 4K, 6K, higher, whatever, and you change the scale or you change anything about it, it doesn't matter. The proxy will still work. I don't think it makes sense to make proxies out of HD and make them even smaller. If your computer can't play, play HD, then that's a whole other um, issue. This is mostly for people that are working in 4K or higher and want to be able to freely edit an unlimited amount of tracks without having the problem of working with high resolution footage. So if you have a look here, I've got some footage and it's 6K, it's playing back pretty good. I've got overlays, I've got mixture of B-roll that's 4K and then other clips that are uh, full on 6K. And it's, it's playing back okay, but I want a snappy, snappy kind of, uh, a, workflow. And to do that, I'm going to convert these into a smaller size, a quarter of the original size. Now I want to show you that if in the, I'm using the essentials workspace. I tweaked it a little bit, but the essentials workspace gives me a larger timeline and gives me a big program monitor. It closes the media browser. And you don't have to use the media browser, but I want to show you this button here, ingest. And if we click on the little wrench, these are the ingest settings that will happen. You can copy media, transcode media, create proxies, copy and create. And um, I've got several tutorials on the basis of uh, on the basics of creating uh, proxies. The idea here between uh, behind copy and create is you stick in a card, it copies the card and makes the uh, the, the proxies all at the same time. Um, so let's not worry about that. I'm going to transcode these. And these are the different uh, formats. And in the newest updates, Premiere Pro is, is, now, is now using QuickTime as the preferred method for creating proxies. They're smaller. Um, in the frame size, but they're much bigger than H.264. The big difference is H.264 require more CPU because they're highly compressed. QuickTime plays like butter. You just need more disk space. Um, but you can pick what the, the format is. 422LT is really typical for creating proxies. My daughter is a feature film editor and she never edits original media. In fact, all of this is done um, before it even gets to her. She just edits, lucky girl. Okay, so um, I'm going to choose, choose a location because I want to be able to show you um, what's going on. So there's a 6K folder and I'm just gonna call this proxy and select that folder. and turn that off and click OK. So you don't have to use this. I just wanted to show you where that was in Media Browser. And that's more for people that are bringing in the media and haven't started a project. In this example, I've already done an edit. I've already got my cuts and all my media is linked, but I want to create proxies after the fact. No problem. I'll select the clips right click on them, go to proxy, and here I can create. I can also attach proxies. So if you've previously made proxies in something like Media Encoder, as long as the name has underscore proxy at the end, this will link them up perfectly. So I'm gonna choose create proxies. It brings up the create proxies dialog box. And again, I'm gonna choose QuickTime. ProRes medium resolution proxy on this one. I could create low resolution, Cineform, DNX, HD. Those are the defaults. I can add an ingest preset. I can also add a watermark. This is new too. So now I'll be able to see 
when I have my proxies turned on or off. Some people really wanted to, to see that because the proxies work so beautifully in Premiere Pro, you can't tell the difference. Okay, and I'm going to use put this next to the original media in the proxy folder. I could browse to that, click OK, and it's going to launch media encoder. And it, because Premiere Pro doesn't do the encoding, it's media encoder that will do it. You see that it's opening each file and creating those proxies for me. So once it's added them all to the queue, it starts to encode them. And you'll notice what's going on down here at the bottom. Look at these little icons. Little badges are showing up as it's making these. So now I know when I have them on the actual clip. There was no way to know if you had a proxy on the timeline. And you can see that showing up there. And I could continue working. I mean, I could be editing this. I don't have to wait for this to be done. I click Make Proxies, and I can start working. Now, of course, it's going to be using all the power of Media Encoder in the background. So, And you don't want it to stop. Actually, maybe it's not a good idea to edit. But anyway, you could if you wanted to. OK, so now I have all of that. If I go to my button editor and turn on Proxies, this is the uh, proxy button, which I've already added here. And right now, we're, we don't have that on. So we're playing back the 6K media. If I click on this, look, it, they've all changed. The ones that are proxies, these badges are now playing as proxies. And I can see that right away. There's the original media, and there's the proxies. If that proxy badge is red, it means something has moved, the, the link is broken. And really, this is just a link. It's not anything special with the clip. If we go and look at uh, our files, oh, it actually made that folder for me, the proxies folder. So you see there's the name, exactly the same name, car ride, car ride underscore proxy, 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 proxy. That's all the names that it's linked for me. Now. What we can do is if we move all the way over to the end, we can see the proxy um, whether information of whether it's attached and all of that. So if we want, we can change the size of that panel and bring these over if we want to see that. So I'm going to bring proxy over. It is way over on the side here. There's the media. I'll put that beside it. Go to the other side. And let's put that one there. So, whoop. so now we have proxies attached. And the proxy frame rate and the proxy name. I'm hitting the tilde key to open this up, but you can also double click on the name of any panel to open it up. So th these three categories here are automatically opened up. They already exist. It's just that there are so many possible um, columns that you can have in list view that uh, most of them are, are, are turned off. but. Adobe now turns these on for you if you create proxies. So it makes things a lot easier. Like I said, if I zoom in on these, you can, you can tell which ones are proxies or not. I didn't make it out of the 4K, so there's no proxy badges there. But once we get over to here, you can see the 6K ones. There's all the badges. And there is the watermark. 
All right, there you go. There's some updates in uh, creating a proxy. I didn't even have to touch uh, media browser at all. And I didn't even have to make that folder. You know when I made that folder? I didn't have to make that folder. It made the folder automatically. I could do the same to the 4K, all in the same project, and it's going to work fine. You can make your own ingest presets too. Those are the default ones. You can make any size you want. So if you're a different uh, 4K that's not exactly nine, uh, six, 16 by nine, you could make one that's quarter resolution so there's no black bars in there. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to keep my ear open of what Adobe updates uh, come out and let you know how it can make a difference for you.